Hi, I'm Sam and welcome to my channel. So I put a poll out a couple of days ago, referenced the most common forms of ailments that can slow you down when you're trying to join the army. And also some people also commented on that saying some things that they'd like me to talk about as well. So I've included as many of them as I can and that I found information out about. I just want to start off by saying this, everything and everyone, each their personal case is different. So I'm going to read what's down, I've got it all here, I'm going to read what's down in policy, however, that policy can change and also the lengths of time you have to wait and be deferred can also change and also you might find you have one of these ailments but it doesn't get picked up and you go straight through anyway. But I'm just going to give you a couple of the popular ones that can slow you down with their process, but they may not. I'm not a medical officer. I'm not in the recruitment team. I'm just here to give you advice and to open up your mind a little bit. And you might be thinking that you may have one of these ailments and it might stop you point blank. A lot of these that I'm going to read out won't stop you. It might be a case of deferral. So let's get into it. So you start off with a, the classification system. The classification system that the military use is called Pullings and the pullings is the P physical capacity. They check check how fit you are. They check your upper limbs, which is you, your locomotion, L, your hearing of right and left, your visual activity, eyesight, right and left, your mental capacity, and also your emotional stability. And we'll pretty much cover one thing on almost every one of those topics. Now I'm going to start off with asthma or wheezing, which is a common um, and recruiting medical officers must take a careful respiratory history included. So this is what they're going to look at now. They look at symptoms of wheezy bronchitis, nighttime or recurrent cough, exercise and cold induced wheeze, previous use of bronchodilators, inhalers and or oral medication, and also if you've been admitted to hospital. So that's what they're going to look for from your doctor and have a look for your medical history with regards to asthma. Candidates with symptoms confined to age less than five years of age or a single episode of wheeze associated with an acute respiratory tract infection, which you needed an asthma pump or steroid treatment may have been prescribed, may be determined fit. So if you haven't had anything since the age of five, you're pretty much absolutely fine. You might have had asthma when you were younger than five. If you've had nothing since, you should be okay. You should be okay. Don't take my word for this. This is, once again, just information for you. Candidates with a recorded history of asthma with the following features would normally be unfit. Normally. However, I know lots of people that are getting deferred for a couple of months for this. Those who have experienced symptoms or taken or been prescribed any form of treatment within the last four years. If you've been prescribed treatment for asthma or wheezing within the last four years, the doctors, <clears throat> what they could do is defer you until those four years are up, dependent on how severe they think the problem may be. Another one is those who have required more than one course of oral steroids, those who have required more than one nebulizer since the age of five, and those who have had a single admission to intensive care or high dependency or multiple admissions to hospital. So if any of those have happened to you, you might be deferred or you may be deemed unfit. Some of those may have happened to you and it was such a long time ago, it doesn't show up on your medical history, for instance, and you might get through absolutely fine. So that is the asthma side of things. Now we're quickly gonna go into seizures and epilepsy. Candidates diagnosed as having epilepsy or, or who have had more than one seizure after their sixth birthday may be unfit, but the following should be noted. Uh, candidates with febrile convulsions before the sixth birthday and with no subsequent seizures could be determined fit. Single seizures. Candidates with a single seizure less than five years prior to entry 
are unfit. So you've had, if you've had a single seizure within the last five years, there's potential that could hamper you joining the military. Candidates who have had a single seizure more than five years before entry and who have not been on treatment during this interval can be determined fit. So you may have had a seizure five years ago, not had any medication since, and then you should be fine or just over five years ago, and that will help. Headaches. This is quite a common one. I got asked a few questions about, so we'll do headaches and migraines next. Headaches. Headaches are common. And those who have infrequent mild headaches may be accepted as fit. Candidates with headaches with any of the following features in the last two years should be determined as unfit. Now, this might not always be the case. So if the headaches with the following features in the last two years are severe enough to disrupt normal activities, including loss of time from work or school, require treatment from a pharmacy with regards to prescription medicine, are aggravated by lack of sleep, missed meals or anxiety and occur more often than once every six months and require prophylactic treatment. If any of those um, you can relate to, that might take time for you to join the army as well. But a lot of people did ask me about headaches, but the chances are a, a, a lot of them won't. A, a lot of them won't kind of apply to you. Okay, migraines. Candidates with any of the following criteria should be considered unfit. One episode of migraine in the last two years with any of the following. Moderate to severe pain, photophobia and or other neurological features. So that would be assessed by the doctor and that will be on your medical record. So if that is the case, you could potentially say be deferred until those two years have gone. Okay, head injuries. Candidates with, so yeah, let's go straight into can, um, head injuries and we'll discuss the rest. Candidates with a past history of head injury who show any evidence of persistent intellectual, psychiatric or neurological symptoms or signs should be considered unfit. Head injuries may be classified according to the following criteria. So mild, moderate, and severe. So mild might be loss of consciousness lasting for less than 30 minutes, moderate loss of consciousness lasting from 30 minutes to 24 hours, or severe, which is a loss of consciousness for more than 24 hours with regards to head injuries. Now, there are other things, there's so much more to some of these things I'm reading out, but these are me generalizing because there are quite a lot. So with head injuries as well, candidates with a history of mild head injury may be determined as fit as long as they are free of post-concussion symptoms. Candidates with a history of moderate head injury may be determined fit, providing two years have elapsed since the head injury. Candidates with a history of severe head injury will normally be unfit. However, that will be Determined fit, providing five years have elapsed since the head injury. So two years since you've been unconscious for between 30 and 24, uh, 30 minutes and 24 hours, or five years if you've been unconscious for more than 24 hours. There are there are other things as well, but the, the list is endless. I'll be here all day. Right, moving on. Eczema, dermatitis. Candidates who have a history of severe atopic dermatitis are normally unfit, not always the case. Severe atopic dermatitis or eczema is defined as having or caused, uh, defined as having required or caused any of the following. Secondary care, if you've needed secondary care because of dermatitis, uh, occlusive dressings, systematic immunomodulatory therapy, phototherapy, intense scratching, insomnia, school or work absence, maintenance therapy. So if you've needed any of them because of dermatitis, that might take a bit longer to get into the army as, as they might look for it to um, subside a little bit as well. So that's w with um, eczema also. Right, so that's that done. So that's pretty simple with, with regards to eczema and dermatitis. It's got to be really, really severe by the looks of things for you to be unfit. Okay, back pain. This is something else I was asked about. 
Episodes where a candidate has been unable to work, attend college for a period of time should be explored in detail. So they're going to start exploring your medical history as well. Those with isolated episodes of lower back pain that resolve fully and quickly with minimal clinical input may be assessed fit once fully functional. Candidates with longer isolated episodes of pre-existing lower back pain that may have required greater clinical input and normally fit provided they've been asymptomatic for at least six months. So you might have a chronic back pain seven or eight months ago, but you've been absolutely fine now. Candidates with a history of sciatic pain or without back pain are normally unfit. So if you have um, sciatic nerve problems are usually unfit, but that has got to be really, really bad for um, sciatica to stop you from, from joining the army. Okay, foot deformities. Candidates with minor conditions that allow the usage of normal footwear with orthotics if necessary and are asymptomatic during activity comparable with military training for three months are fit. So minor foot deformities are fine. Candidates who use custom made footwear are normally unfit. Those who require an orthotic but can use issued boots are normally fit. So um, hammer mallet and claw toes. Candidates with mild conditions without history of symptoms are fit. Those with fixed clawing of toes, hammer or mallet toes are usually unfit. But like I said, whatever your circumstances, always apply. Loss of toes now. Those with the loss of terminal phalanx of the great toe, so your big toe, the end part, uh, with no painful stump may be fit. Those with total or subtotal loss of other toes uh, are fit, subject to normal outcome on functional testing when you go to assessment centre. Candidates with total loss of either of their big toes and normally unfit. Shouldn't stop you applying. Flat feet. Candidates with flat feet causing no systems are usually fit, or no symptoms rather. Those with mobile flat feet causing symptoms or with rigid flat feet are normally unfit. The unfit part, that a lot of the time is deferral on these sort of things while you can get it sorted out. Um, now we're gonna go briefly into dental. So that was the foot deformities, not too much to worry about that. Candidates with dental diseases or other oral conditions that are treatable by a general dental practitioner and not normally rejected. Dental phobia candidates, on the other hand, who cannot tolerate routine primary care and the local anaesthetic and require conscious sedation or general anesthesia are normally unfit. So if you have a huge phobia of the dentist and you won't even go into the dentist, chances are you could, you could well be unfit. However, that's another deferral thing or it's something that you can take care of, of your own uh, by yourself just by going to the dentist. Uh, cleft lip and cleft palates. Candidates with uncorrected cleft lip and or palates are unfit. So you need to get it corrected generally before you apply. If you're currently undergoing orthodontic treatment, candidates who are undergoing active orthodontic treatment will normally be unfit, unfit until treatment is complete. Generally, orthodontic treatment takes place when you're young anyway, so you can get that cracked and then join the army. Right, sickle cell. Now I get a lot of questions about sickle cell. Let's get into it. This usually benign condition is associated with normal development and exercise tolerance. All candidates should be asked about their sickle cell trait and the following applies. Individuals with SCT have a higher risk of exertional rhabdomyolysis and other conditions such as hypos, hyposthenuria, a reduced ability to concentrate your urine. You could also get DVT and a splenic infarction. In a candidate with SCT, the sickle cell trait, um, any demonstrable history of exertional rhabdomyolysis, I can barely say it, or other significant complication related to SCT will result in the candidate being unfit. So you have the sickle cell trait, then it's a case of if you're going to 
um, have the correct exercise tolerance to continue. That can take time. So that's one for you. The sickle cell trait is, is quite um, a common one uh, within um, certain personnel that apply for the army. So that's one that can hesitate your recruitment into the military. Right then, disorders of psychological development. So now we're looking at candidates diagnosed with autism or similar disorders by the specialist autism service are normally unfit. Now, once again, should not stop you trying to apply for the military. Candidates diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome by a specialist autism service may appear unremarkable on examination, but should normally be unfit. That means you wouldn't even notice. If there is doubt about the diagnosis or the condition is mild and does not cause disability, candidates should be referred to the single service occupational physician responsible for service entry. So you might have it on your medical history, but you think you don't, then you can get that uh, referred. In cases of mild, entirely non-disabling Asperger's syndrome, the occupational physician may advise single service recruiting staff psychiatrist assessment is not required because of the pre-entry test of joining the army that in itself is kind of like um, a preoccupational assessment. So that is uh, autism and Asperger's. Autism, you might find a little bit harder getting into the army with that. Hyperkinetic disorders, so um, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, is the most common diagnosis to present in this category, the hyperkinetic disorders. There's a large spectrum of behaviour in children and adolescents that attracts this diagnosis. Symptoms suggested of this disorder may also be part of normal adolescent behaviour or be present features of anxiety or depressive disorders. So essentially, ADHD can be associated with comorbid common mental disorders and substance misuse. In cases where CMD or substance misuse is present, the prognosis is poor and candidates should be determined unfit. So they're saying there, if you have ADHD, because you've been utilising drugs or comorbid common mental disorder, you have something else, the chances are you have ADHD because of the drugs or the CMD, then it's going to be um, classed as unfit. However, candidates with ADHD but without comorbidities may be determined fit if the candidate has been stable without evidence of dysfunctional behaviour for one year prior to application without medication. So you stay on the straight and narrow, always stay on the straight and narrow before you um, apply to join the military. But hopefully some of that might make things a little bit clearer or it's still as clear as mud. But what I would say is this, all I'm giving you there is just some guidelines in what is written down in policy and they change and they are just guidelines. Everybody is different. So please, if you have any questions and I think I can answer them, just message me. Um, and I always say that if I, I will be straight up with you if I do not know the answer and you, it's best to ask the recruiter. But what I would say is don't let any of this put you off. It might take a little bit longer, but now at least you know. And secondly, just apply. Just apply and see what the medical officers and the recruitment centre say. Other than that, take care. I really hope this has helped. Goodbye.